Hey everybody, this is Perch. I've got a question here from somebody who's listened to a bunch of my videos and say, hey, you, you talk about a bunch of old stuff and we've never heard of this before. Please explain what the Comics Code Authority is. What does that even mean? You say there's a seal. I don't like, is this an animal? What is this? Okay. Um, so the, the Comics Code Authority uh, came about in the 50s. And this was, uh, this basically followed a bunch of Senate hearings. Uh, Frederick Wortham's book, Seduction of the Innocent, was out. And there was this idea that comics were out of control and that they were marketing harmful, dangerous things to children that were turning them into murderers and Satanists and other things. So the idea became that the Comics Code Authority would get established. And it was established by the Comics Magazine Association. One of the things that I, I've heard on uh, one of the bigger comic YouTube channels is that uh, they they were claiming the government made the Comics Code Authority, and that's not true at all. The comics industry themselves, the Comics Magazine Association of America, made this, and they did it to fend off what they were worried was going to be government intervention. We didn't know whether government intervention was going to come or not, but the, the Comics Code Authority basically said that comics will self-regulate, we'll take care of our own shop, you don't need to go in on this. And the whole code itself was voluntary. There was no law um, or anything. However, it did gain traction because the comics industry at the time was using the newsstand and a lot of uh, the big publishers, the, the people who got in on this, including, I mean, in particular, uh, let's see, just, just various members um, really got excited and then started to promote to these big uh, destination points. Uh, where the comics are going to be sold, that we comply with the Comics Code Authority. We are we are providing safe content for your customers. And of course, when they did that, it it had the countermeasure of anyone who didn't go for the Comics Code Authority had trouble selling into those venues. So that's that's kind of how it came out. There's never any government law or anything like that that said you had to be part of the Comics Code Authority. And a bunch of uh, comics both kind of, uh, you know, like, like, for example, there's a comic uh, publisher called Classics Illustrated that took uh, basically classic books and made comics out of them. And those never had the Comic Code Authority on them at all. They, they completely ignored it. So did Western Comics, Dell, Treasure Chest. They never used it and they did just fine. All, but they had to do maybe a little bit more work to explain why they didn't have it. The Comics Code uh, Authority, or basically the code had a number of rules that basically said that comics had to follow these rules in order to comply. And by I should mention at this point that it was not uncommon for comics to break the rules and just put the seal on anyway. And it, I mean, the, the, the idea that this was regulated very tightly is, is not true. But anyway, those rules are interesting because they were established in the mid 50s and they this this whole thing survived. I don't know when the code finally died, but I think it was it was it was well into the year 2000 that uh, the stamp kind of disappeared and and, and I, I think that I'm trying to think I think Marvel dropped it in 2000 and ah, God like two, uh, it, very late in the game DC um, basically dropped participation in 2011 just to give you a sense of how long this thing did did hang out um, but. Uh, th these are the rules because they're kind of interesting. Number one, crime shall never be presented in a way as to create sympathy for the criminal, to promote distrust of the forces of law and justice, or to inspire others with a desire to imitate criminals. Now, clearly, uh, that rule was was stretched to the limits with things like the Punisher, uh, with the various stories that were going on in Spider-Man at the time. There's lots of, of cases where uh, characters would would go bad and other things. But anyway, that was probably the one that was broken the most. Uh, rule number two, if crime is depicted, it shall be as sordid as a sordid and unpleasant activity. Um, again, that one tended to to wander. It was pretty common for them to show criminals living it up and, and having a good time. And, and uh, so it wasn't always kind of sordid activity. But one of the ways they kind of got around this rule is they would have the criminals, you know, they would basically change the difference between criminal and villain. And like villains could be people like Dr. Doom who lived in a castle and, and life was pretty awesome. And criminals would be like, you know, 
sneaking out in the streets and, and holding up liquor stores and things. Um, policemen, that rule number three, policemen, judges, government officials, and respected institutions shall never be presented in a such a way as to create disrespect for established authority. Again, this, this came and went, certainly with titles like the Punisher. Um, rule number four, criminals shall not be presented so as to be rendered glamorous or to occupy a position which creates a desire for emulation. They're really, you know, firm on this. But again, this they the way they skirted this in many cases was to uh, basically create the the super villain. Um, and keep in mind that around early to mid seventies, I want to say a lot of the rules that were really based around uh, criminals and sympathetic were, I would say, not necessarily erased, but they were they were changed a lot and. Um, that criminal behavior uh, could be shown to be glamorous as long as it was ultimately punished and, and so on. Um, rule number five, in every instance, good shall triumph over evil and the criminal shall be punished for his misdeeds. Uh, fortunately, they got around this by having all the criminals be women and then uh, they didn't have to be punished. No, I'm, ju I'm just kidding there. Um, ah, gender and rules. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, scenes of excessive violence shall be prohibited. Scenes of brutal torture, excessive and unnecessary knife, knife and gunplay, physical agony, gory and gruesome crime shall be eliminated. Obviously, that went away. No comic magazine shall use the words horror or terror in its title, which is hilarious, but that was really... That was really to uh, uh, directly address some of the things that Wortham was bringing up. All scenes of horror, excessive bloodshed, gory or gruesome crimes, depravity, lust, sadism, masochism shall not be permitted. All lurid, unsavory, gruesome illustrations shall be eliminated. Inclusion of stories dealing with evil shall be used uh, or shall be published only where the intent is to illustrate a moral issue. In no case shall evil be presented alluringly nor so as to injure the sensibilities of the reader. Ah, that's a mouthful there. Um, scenes dealing with or instruments associated with the walking dead, torture, vampires and vampirism, ghouls, cannibalism, werewolfism are prohibited. Um, plenty of stuff was uh, was changed there, uh, definitely. Uh, in terms of, you know, there were, there, were, there were vampires and there were werewolves and all kinds of stuff. Um, Marvel, uh, briefly, because they couldn't call them zombies, were calling them like zoombies. They like they, they made a new word and, uh, and there was a lot of there was a lot of kind of uh, shenanigans. These rules seem to occur um, completely uh, to to break them in, in comical ways. Uh, anyway, let's see a profanity, obscenity, smut, vulgarity and words or symbols which have acquired undesirable meanings are forbidden. Sure. Nudity in any form is prohibited as is indecent or undue exposure. Uh, what was interesting about this was. Um, you know, they, there was no real problem with showing uh, superheroes and, and, and many comic artists back during the 70s and 80s talked about how they draw the women just naked and then they would just draw in like lines for the boots and things uh, at the end. <laughs> in fact, if you go back and you look at some copies of the Avengers in, uh, from the 70s, you'll see that a bunch of the women have like bare feet, but it's colored as if it's a boot, but you'll see toes. And, uh, and, you know, and the butt and everything is completely well-defined and it's just, it, it, when you look at it, you, you can't ever look at the page the same way again, because it becomes incredibly clear that the artists are just drawing these characters completely naked. And then they're, they're just drawing lines at the end and coloring them, but, uh, check it out. I, I, you, you think I'm joking, but go back to the seventies, look at a bunch of the comics. You'll see toes in, in the boots. It's pretty funny. Anyway, um, suggestive or salacious illustration or suggestive posture is unacceptable. That one's just, that one's just comical in light of everything that happened. Suggestive posture. I guess that's that, um, you know, that, that picture of spider woman coming up over the wall that, that, that would have, you know, anyway. females should be drawn realistically without any exaggeration of any physical qualities. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, illicit sex relations are neither to be hinted at nor portrayed. Rape scenes as well as sexual abnormalities are unacceptable. Seduction and rape shall never be shown and suggested. Sex perversion or any interference of same is strictly forbidden. Nudity with matriculous purpose and salacious postures shall not be permitted. In the advertising of any product, clothes figures shall never be presented in such a way as to be offensive or contrary to good taste or morals. So the comedy in all this is almost every single one of those rules were uh, broken. Uh, as, as often as possible with uh, fun ways of getting around. Do you remember there was a character in Marvel where the, I think her name was Cloud and her costume was clouds. She was just naked. And then there was like clouds over the, the right bits. Um, anyway, that was going on. So there were lots of fights. 
over the Comic Code Authority over the years, um, and and sometimes these came into uh, co- came into kind of conflict where you know Stan Lee um, got hired, or or the United States Department of Health, Education, and Welfare asked Stan Lee to do a story about drug abuse, so they did it, but then the Comics Code Authority was not okay with it, and then there was a big fight, and in general, the Comics Code Authority. Um, had very little value as time went on. Uh, a lot of, I remember in the 70s, there was kind of a brief gasp of people who were trying to, once again, use the the seal as something that that places like uh, grocery stores and convenience stores could look for to trust that there wasn't going to be smut in the hands of the children. But uh, but that didn't that really didn't go anywhere. And at, at any rate, um, I remember DC really went on the offensive where Carmine Infantano, uh, he he uh, basically said that uh, Marvel was defying the code and they were breaking the rules and they were putting dangerous comics in the hands of kids and and the DC won't be doing those kinds of stories and uh, it, it, that was a you know that that was kind of a uh, it went nowhere <laughs> and um, and then there was the uh, Green Arrow Green Lantern story uh, where Speedy became a heroin addict uh, but anyway. So all these things, uh, all considered, um, they they just never, they, you know, the Comics Code Authority kind of died a, a quiet death where all of a sudden, kind of simultaneously, everybody's like, why are we putting up with this? And then they stopped. And that's uh, that's what happened. So what is the Comic Code Authority? It was an actual seal, like a little label that went on the cover and you could see approved by the Comics Code Authority. And then you knew it was good for your kids and everybody would be fine. And that's uh, that's all it is. So there you go. There's the answer. Uh, hey, if do you have any questions or thoughts, or do you think the Comics Code Authority should come back for some crazy reason? Let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notification. Most importantly, though, of course, thanks for listening.